I haven't had a major update since 2023.12.1 and that was on April 20th. There were a couple minor updates since then, but nothing of note. Well, today's update 2023.26.7 is a big one with 14 documented and 5 undocumented changes for a total of 19. If you have 26.1, 0.3, 0.6, they will all be covered in this video. I'll update it now and see what I get. Let's get started. Here are the release notes. Let's jump into the list. 26.7 only lists minor undocumented fixes. Everything else is grouped under the major update number 2023.26. First up is Charge on solar. Charge your Tesla with solar energy if you have a power wall. You can choose how much charging comes from solar versus other sources. To set it up, open the Tesla app for your vehicle, tap the charge on solar message, and follow the instructions. This requires power wall version 23.12.10 and Tesla app version 4.22.5. Unfortunately, I don't have Tesla Solar nor a Powerwall to test this out. Next up, we have Spotify Refresh. Play your Spotify music, playlists, podcasts, and audiobooks with a more familiar look and feel. Go to App Launcher and then Spotify. This requires premium connectivity. I do not have a premium Spotify account, so you will see this message if you are in the same situation or have not logged into the account. Number three is destination closing soon. Navigation now shows if your destination is closing soon or may be closed by the time you arrive. Go to the navigate box and choose a destination. When that pops up, you will see a message near the top if the location happens to be closing soon. Here's an example. Number four is Bluetooth game controllers. Use Bluetooth controllers to play games in arcade. To pair a controller, open the Bluetooth panel and follow the instructions. This feature works best with PS5 controllers. Let me test this with both the PS5 and Xbox One controllers. Scroll to the top of the left column until you see the Add New Device. Then press that button. Here are the instructions for the DualSense controller. Press the PS button, which is at the center. At the same time, press the Create button, which is in the top left of the touchpad for a few seconds. When you see the blue light flash, let go. Now, press the Start Search on the Tesla Bluetooth screen you will see the Sony controller come up as DualSense wireless controller. Press connect and after a few seconds you will see it connected to the car. Note you can have a max of two Bluetooth connections to the car at the same time. For example my phone and this controller. If you want to add a second controller you will need to disconnect the phone. Here's a quick test of the controller with Skyforce Reloaded. Use the left thumbstick for movement and the right trigger button for fire. You can also use the circle, triangle, and square buttons to control the shield, laser, and bomb. The X button also works as a fire button. And as you can see, everything seems to work pretty well. Nice. I also have an Xbox One controller, however I could not get it to work. I'll probably do a follow-up video on that. Next up we have number 5, warmer display colors. Set your touchscreen to automatically adjust to warmer colors at night. Go to controls, display, and then reduce blue light. It's known that reducing blue light may help lower eye strain, eye damage, and sleep disturbances. 
we now have Recents and Favorites are now in separate tabs in the Media Player. Here's a close-up of the Media Player in the lower left part of the screen. You can click on Recents and Favorites. The sliders to adjust volume, temperature, and charge limit are now more precise. Here's a sample, moving it from left to right or right to left, it does seem a little bit smoother. Sentry mode records if someone tries to open a door or trunk when the vehicle is locked. Here I'll show an example of me lifting on the rear hatch and going over to the front screen you can see that it's now recording. Access the owner's manual and release notes more quickly with the new manual app. Read up on everything from regenerative braking to phone key or maximizing range. You can now switch between the manual and the release notes very easily. And now this is a second location for release notes. Also note that the release notes left column has been simplified and now only lists the name of the new feature instead of the category such as climate control improvements. Automatic navigation improvements. If you have automatic navigation enabled in your Tesla, you'll now be presented with your suggested destination when you enter your vehicle. The pop-up on the screen will display your destination your ETA, battery upon arrival, as well as a photo of your destination if available. You can begin driving to automatically start the route, or you can cancel the suggested destination. Note you can turn on automatic navigation by going to controls, then navigation, and then enabling automatic navigation. The Swiss French keyboard is now available. Automatic headlights. Your lights turn on automatically when windshield wipers are activated and headlights are set to auto in controls, lights, and headlights. This is a welcome feature since many states have laws requiring headlights to be on while wipers are activated. Camera view on Tesla app. You can now see multiple cameras at once when checking your vehicle surroundings. To start using this feature, go to the vehicle settings in controls, safety, view live camera, via mobile app. This feature requires mobile app version 4.22.5 and premium connectivity. However, it did not work in my app, and I think it's because of my hardware 2.5 computer. Vampire Survivors Game. This is a new game in the arcade section. Defend yourself against an onslaught of night creatures to survive until dawn. To play, shift to park and go to the app launcher, arcade, and then Vampire Survivors. This game did not show up in my arcade list. I didn't see anything explaining why. I'll chalk it up to the hardware 2.5 computer again. The first undocumented feature is improved phone calls. When you have your climate system set to auto, the HVAC fan speed may be lowered automatically to reduce cabin noise while you're on a phone call. The second undocumented feature is service mode improvements. Several new diagnostic screens have been added to service mode. They include the ability to test your steering wheel stalks, scroll wheels, horn, and parking brake. You can now view status and details of your airbags, low voltage battery, and the pitch of your vehicle's cameras. Service mode is a mode that's typically reserved for service technicians, although it can be accessed by anyone. It is used to view information and test various aspects of the car. I'll briefly show most of the screens in service mode. I may do a deeper dive into this for a future video. 
Supercharging details. When charging your vehicle at a Tesla supercharger, your vehicle will now display more details about the supercharging session. On the charging screen, which you can get to by clicking on controls and then charging, your Tesla will now display the price per kilowatt hour you're being charged, as well as the total energy charged. This is in addition to the supercharger location and total cost for the supercharger session, both of which were added in prior updates. Updated Apps Badge Similar to the new badges that Tesla added in update 2023.12 that signify which features are new in menus, Tesla will now display a blue dot underneath each app that is new or has been updated. I don't have any apps that have this marker, so here is what it looks like on the main menu. And finally, number 19, Daily Charge Limit. The recommended daily charge level has been updated for some vehicles, depending on your vehicle and the type of batteries it uses, and where it was manufactured, Tesla may have lowered the recommended daily charge limit. For example, in my car, the daily charge limit is now 50 to 79%, and the trip limit is now 80% to 100%. Previously, it was 90 to 100% for trip. Interesting to see this lowering of the daily recommended charge. I normally charge about 80% for my daily driving, since I have a nickel cobalt aluminum or NCA battery pack. Lithium iron phosphate or LFP batteries have a higher suggested daily limit, usually around 100%. So in conclusion, after waiting over three months, I got a significant update. Overall, while there are a whole lot of updates, not many are very exciting. The most important, I feel, is the automatic headlights while raining using wipers. This was something we needed a long time ago. Most everything else is refinements. I'm also feeling that my 2018 Model 3 with the computer hardware version 2.5 is starting to show the limits of upgrades. New game editions will probably be limited due to the slower CPU. Also, more complicated features will likely be cut, for example, Zoom meetings in previous updates. I wonder if this is Tesla's subtle warning to sell my car and buy a new one. Well, that wraps up this episode of System Update 2023.26.7. What do you think of this update? If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.